When I was 28, I almost died of a colon blockage, and I was working in television news. We had a big snowstorm. The station brought in all these highly processed, salty meats, and I didn't drink enough water. And when I went to the emergency room, the doctor said they'd never seen a blockage in somebody so young and so large, and that I would need to be on medication the rest of my life. And it was the same year that my sister got diagnosed with breast cancer. And I'm going, I am way too young to be on medicine the rest of my life. So I ran to the health food store and read all five books on fiber. And several of them were the Dennis Burkett books on fiber. And it was a concept I had never heard of. And so I immediately changed my diet at that point to uh, a macrobiotic diet. And then I morphed to vegetarian and then eventually vegan. And during that time, I started reading uh, a number of years later the books by, the very early books by Dr. Neil Barnard and of course Dr. McDougall's books. My, my goal in life is just to beat the odds to beat the genetic odds. My mom, aunt, and both sisters would go on to have breast cancer. And the sister who hadn't had breast cancer yet would develop diabetes and heart disease very early in her 20s and then became obese and as a result had to have herniated disc surgery and when she went in, they called it routine surgery. I always love that word, routine. And she, because of a compromised immune system, I believe, um, got MRSA during the surgery, flatlined on the table, almost died, and the MRSA lodged in her neck, and she is now paralyzed in a nursing home for the rest of her life. And then within the year of that develops breast cancer, becoming my second sister to have breast cancer. We were part of the original breast cancer gene studies. And even though they don't tell you what the outcome of the study is, our family really didn't need a study to tell us what we already knew. And so this kind of experience just makes you so focused on how do I avoid this mess. My aunt died of breast cancer in our home when I was five years old. So it was very traumatizing and trying to figure out just what is the truth about food. This light went off when I started reading Dr. McDougall's books and Dr. Barnard's books. and. I just thought, why aren't we getting this information from our mainstream doctors? And it's funny, I, I go back to my uh, family doctor locally every once in a while and get blood work. <laughs> and, and when they call with the results and I have this incredibly low cholesterol and my, my labs are great, they go, remind me again, let's see, it's 60. What are you on? Uh, you're on Lipitor, right? And I go, no, I'm on plants. After I left television, I worked at Smith Barney for five years as a financial consultant. And we had a lot of catered lunches and dinners, working lunches where the only choice I got was what topping I wanted on my pizza. And the ratio of men to women was 10 to one. So I had to pick my battles pretty carefully. And I, I joked that I had my McDougal cups under my desk, but one cannot live on McDougal cups alone. And so my health deteriorated at that point. Um, and when we moved to Florida and I quit Smith Barney, I found myself in the emergency room one more time with hemorrhaging fibroid tumors. And the emergency room doctor said, you need a hysterectomy now. And I was just in a lot of pain. I was miserable. But I got my regular OB on the phone. She said, Ellen, go back to that vegan diet and call me in the morning. And sure enough, within three weeks, all signs of menopause were gone. I never needed to go on medication. It was amazing how well just adding a little fiber, drinking a little water, and getting rid of the meat and dairy improved my health. And my blood work has been great. My cholesterol, my cholesterol has been super. And uh, I haven't looked back. When Angelina Jolie made public that she was having prophylactic mastectomies because she was feeling that was the best course of action for her family history, which was very similar to mine, I just did my own take on that because I feel like for young children, teenagers to listen to that and think that, oh yeah, we can just start whacking off body parts because we have a risk of getting cancer. My belief is that why don't you try a plant-based diet and see how that works? The risk of getting breast cancer is huge for people like me who have the genetic 
tendency in, our, in, in the family. But I think we can do a lot more to try and make sure it never happens in the first place. Genes don't determine destiny. And there is much you can do to defy them. Genes take a trigger and it's not a death sentence just because you have some of these crazy wild genes floating about in your family tree. So I think the idea, the concept that we would start cutting off body parts to try and avoid the genetic destiny that we have been taught to believe that we have is just outrageous. And, and part of that is because of my own history of breastfeeding. I know how important that was in terms of prevention, I believe, but also the bonding experience that happens with, with the babies. And I think that an 18-year-old girl who hears somebody like Angelina Jolie say, okay, yeah, this is fine, you go ahead and do that, they don't even know what they're gonna miss by not having the experience of breastfeeding. And I certainly felt that not only for myself, but in all the women that I came across in my experience during that, that time of life.